Josh White had a chaotic childhood. He grew up with an absent father who was addicted to alcohol and drugs. Then at 11 years old, Josh sang at a funeral and found his calling. Josh White is an author, recording artist, and founding pastor of Dwarf Hope in Portland, Oregon. Growing up with an absent father who struggled with addiction, Josh felt invisible and struggled to find his place in this world. In his book, Stumbling Toward Eternity, Josh White explains that the cross of Jesus is where we both lose and find ourselves. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, Josh White. Josh, it's so great to have you here. Yeah, thank you for having me. What a fascinating story you have. Um, you know, you can't grow up with an out with a dad absent without having some psychological and emotional and spiritual repercussions from that. Um, and that really affected your feeling about yourself as a child. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in, you know, relative poverty in the rainy Pacific Northwest, you know, depressed mill town. Uh, my father, my mom and dad got married when they were so young. I mean, 18 and 20, uh, divorced after a year. Um, in fact, my first story in my book is uh, my earliest memory is my mom and dad fighting over me because my dad drunk was trying to take me um, and they were, I remember him screaming, he's my son too. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think growing up in a home where either my, mo my mom was single um, and, uh, yeah, there she is, uh, <laughs> um, uh, working two jobs to support yeah. me oh, and my, yes. my two brothers or, or married, you know, to a couple of different men that yeah. were stepdads. And so I think that the lack of foundation, sure. uh, that sense of, uh, invisibility and then probably the overwhelming burden of being asked to be the man in the house without having an example of what a man exactly should be. Goodness <laughs> so. sakes. you know that, that invisibility you you write about in the book so clearly and then at the age of 11 you went with your mom to sing at a funeral you sang the lead you i mean you'd never really done but it was like you found yourself in music yeah i mean that was definitely the first glimpse i mean uh uh, school was still hard. I mean, I was young and my mom came to faith when I was in third grade. And so, and she kind of discovered her. She always had a beautiful voice. I mean, I grew up with my mom singing me the carpenters every night. Like she, <laughs> I like kind of a weird soft spot for all soft, 70s soft rock because of my mother. Um, I think it was like raised on Barry Manilow and Johnny Mathis or something. They were good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when she got saved, she, you know, she immediately started doing, you know, back in the day of mm -hmm. accompaniment tapes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah we, right. we were at we had sang at church uh, and some uh, a father who lost his son heard us sing and um, asked if we would play and it was I remember it was Michael W. Smith friends and I yes. had to lead and yes oh, it was a moment where I was like I'm like I want to do this and I, I ended up uh, even though I, I um, walked away from my faith at 15 I I went to Seattle at yeah. 19 to pursue music and uh, obviously wear the, the, my background on my skin yeah. quite, quite clearly. <laughs> I, I want to talk a little bit about your book, a big bit about your good book actually, called Stumbling Toward Eternity, mm -hmm. Losing and Finding Ourselves in the Cross of Jesus. What, what made you focus on the crucifixion when you wrote this? Well, I think that first of all, the cross is the center. Uh, if, if the gospel is the center of the faith, the, the cross is the center of the gospel. Um, I think that if we remove the cross from Christianity, from our discourse, we actually drain Christianity of its blood. Uh, you know, Paul says, you know, the Jews seek after signs, uh, the Greeks seek after knowledge, but we preach Christ crucified. And I see those wars happen in the church today, which is, you know, there's pride in experience or pride in knowledge, but I think that the cross is the thing that puts everyone on an even yeah. playing field. It's the reminder that the gospel is not a ladder that we climb. It's about a God who's come down to us, yeah. who's met us in our brokenness. Talk a little bit about the seven words Jesus spoke from the cross. I know you can't get through all of it, but... <laughs> yeah, so, so Jesus spoke seven words from the cross. And what I would argue is that each word actually is Jesus... Um, exegeting his, uh, his, own, his own atonement. Mm -hmm. it, there's, there's such power and beauty 
uh, in such a revelation of God's heart. You know, T.F. Torrance, the great um, Scottish theologian, once said, there is no God behind the back of Jesus. Uh, and uh, Jesus himself said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. And so when he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, he isn't wrestling from an angry father of forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's proclaiming the heart of a forgiving God. Uh, and, uh, you know, when he when he speaks to the thief on the cross today, you know, my a lot of my story, I try to weave my kind of significant moments of my life, what I would consider traumatic moments mm -hmm. or, or life shaping moments. Sure. Uh, and because for me, the, the interest is how does the gospel, how does the theology, yeah. I love theology, but how does it intersect with yeah. life and how does it how does it speak to the impossibility of human existence because yes. uh, yeah. I think life often feels impossible. And so I think that the statements from the cross is a, is a beautiful way of understanding God's heart toward us in our brokenness. You're going to sing a song for us today called Forgiven. What does the song mean to you and how important is forgiveness for all of us? Yeah, um, well, the song is very important. It's inspired by lyrics from a, a 16th century uh, hymn. And, uh, you know, I, forgiveness is a big theme in the book. You know, my dad died last year, actually a year ago, February, yeah. February 9th. Uh, and I, I actually had kind of writer's block. I was like a year late turning my book in. <laughs> uh, and I realized that actually his death was the close to the story. Oh. My dad came to faith in 2020. Uh, and he was in and out of the hospital and he, um, he was, you know, ICU, like they would nurse him back to health. But in that time, the chaplain, the chaplain yeah. kept sharing the gospel with yeah. him. And, uh, and it reminded me that I can't say that I have received Jesus's forgiveness and refuse to offer that forgiveness so to nice. others. Um, that, that I, I, I have a big focus in the book that, we can't say we love God and refuse to love our neighbor. And our neighbor is anyone who's beside us, yes, in front of us, behind us, us at any <laughs> given moment of any yeah, given day. Exactly. And the fundamental thing I tell our church every week um, and what I had to embody with my father was on your worst day, Jesus is crazy about you. Yeah. Um, and uh, and my ability to enter into my dad's suffering um, was where I actually found my ability to truly forgive him. It wasn't yeah. enough to say I'd forgiven him, to call him on the phone and tell him about Jesus. I had to go there and I had to Need be with to be him. Real. And I was actually with him when he passed mm. and I was looking into his eyes wow. and I found the embodiment of the final words from Jesus on the cross, wow. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Wow. Um, and and I think that my dad is like the thief on the cross. You know, he wasn't, yeah. he was always worried about his salvation because he wasn't able to do anything. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like the forgiveness of Christ is not That's based upon, message. yeah, right. it's not based right. upon what you've done. Yeah. Everything that needs to be done has been done by yeah. Christ. I'm going to release you to go yeah. sing your song while I tell people about where they can get your book. So please feel free to move over there as we wait for Forgiven. All right. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> A wonderful message. Thank you so much for being with us, Josh. I want to mention book is called Stumbling Toward Eternity, Losing and Finding Ourselves in the Cross of Jesus, and it's available nationwide.